Welcome back to Northwest Elite Spirit, the channel you come to to train your mind, body, and spirit. I'm Coach Brian. If you haven't hit that subscribe button subscribe. yet, do that now and make sure to ring that notification bell to stay up to date on all of my newest releases. This is X Marks the Spot, Discovering the Nagual's Treasure. From Encounters with the Nagual, Conversations with Carlos Castaneda by Armando Torres from the chapter I believe because I want to. It is difficult for me to write about such a personal concept as the verification of the postulates of sorcerers. My own agreement with those ideas was not a matter of arriving at coherent explanations, but rather was a consequence of my being at least minimally experientially involved and of my building a new kind of consensus from there. The warrior's language and dialogue elements that were new to me are not founded in our common reason, but rather in freed energy saved. As Carlos explained to me, the validation of such an irrational topic as the movement of the assemblage point can only be done via experience with the premises of power. He said that any intent to explain something is a product of the fixation of the assemblage point in a specific position. And so there is no other way to corroborate the assemblage point's movement than by moving it for ourselves and seeing what happens. Faced with the overwhelming logic of his argument, I asked Carlos, does that mean that it is not possible to verify the statements of sorcerers from the outside? Carlos answered, On the contrary, the effects of power can only be lived from the outside because once our attention flows, we stop being a rigid and isolated me. And instead, we blend into the world that surrounds us. That is why seers say that the mystery of the world is not inside us, but outside. In other words, the solution is not mental. It is practical. I asked him what was practical about a topic as vague as the movement of the assemblage point. He replied that the movement was something vague for me because I did not have any voluntary control over my states of awareness. As an analogous example, he mentioned learning how to read and write, something that may seem vague and completely unimportant to a savage, but ends up becoming a vital necessity for civilized man. And that example, he said, could only give a bleak idea of how urgent the control of the assemblage point becomes for a sorcerer. I wanted to know how it was possible that such a topic of such importance goes unnoticed in the life of the immense majority of people. He answered that the movement of the assemblage point is something as natural and at the same time as sophisticated as speaking or thinking. If we are not taught how to do it, we never do it. He assured me that the key to either reaching or missing the extraordinary achievements of sorcerers resides in our consensus, in the agreements we make. Carlos explained saying, to verify facts, one first has to agree on their meaning. Unfortunately, for most people to agree means to be rigid and not to depart from the official description. Therefore, we must have a strong will to learn if we are to dare exploring other areas of consent. Sorcerers have found that there are two ways of reaching an agreement. The first one is via the collective consensus. It starts from reason and it can take you very far, but it will inevitably throw you into a paradox in the end. The other way of reaching an agreement is via consensus induced by a movement of the assemblage point, but it can only be corroborated by those that share similar experiences. 
consensus based on individual experience has an advantage over one based on explanations. Your senses are complete in themselves, whereas reason, on the other hand, only works by means of comparisons of dualities, either positive and negative, certain or false, and so on. The first effect of penetrating the consensus of sorcerers is that those dualities we have always accepted as something self-evident stop being operative, which in the beginning is extremely disconcerting for our reasoning. In time, sorcerers learn that in a world where there are no solid objects but only beings who flow among various states of awareness, there is no need to have separate truth from lies. Don Juan said that the truth is like the cornerstone of a building a sensible man should not try to remove. When we surrender to definitions, our energy becomes stagnated or blocked. The tendency to surrender to definitions is an imposition of the foreign mind and we have to put an end to it. Experience substituted for reason-based consensus was what Don Juan called to believe without believing. For sorcerers, this completely redefines the concept of corroboration. Sorcerers do not look for definitions, but for results. If a practice is able to elevate our level of awareness, what does it matter how we explain it to ourselves? The means by which we will start acting to save and increase our energy are not important, because once we are in possession of our totality, we enter into a field of attention where we do not care about defining concepts anymore and things demonstrate themselves. Perhaps you think these statements just give permission to be irresponsible, but a warrior understands the real message. Reality is a doing and a doing is measured by its fruits. Anyone who judges a sorcerer from an everyday point of view will judge him to be an irredeemable liar because the universes of each do not coincide. And if the sorcerer tries to explain inexplicable things with words borrowed from the everyday point of view, he will inevitably become entangled in contradictions and he will be seen as a humbug or a lunatic. That is why I have said that from the point of view of the everyday world, the world of the Nagual seems fraudulent. In fact, that goes for all isms, and Nagualism is not an exception. But as opposed to the defenders of reason who seek followers for their particular kind of agreement, a sorcerer will not tell you that his vision of the world is the real one. He tells you, I believe because I want to, and you can do it too. This expression of will is something very powerful and will provoke as an avalanche events of power. If you pay close attention, you will notice that children do not just innocently believe in the magic of the world. They believe because they are complete and they see, and the same thing happens with sorcerers. The fabulous stories I have told you do not belong to this plane of reality in which you and I are having this conversation, but they did happen. Nagualism is like somebody who inherited a story and a treasure map, but who does not believe in it. So he comes to you and gives his secret to you. And you are so clever or so naive that you take the story as truth and dedicate yourself to deciphering the map but the map is coded with various keys which make you learn several languages, go to difficult places, dig in the ground, climb mountains, descend into ravines, and dive into deep waters. In the end, after years of searching, you arrive at a place where the treasure should be, and oh, how disappointing, you just find a mirror. Was it a lie? Well, you are healthy, strong, well-educated, full of adventures, and you have had a great experience. Truly, there was a treasure there. Keeping in mind that there are neither truths nor lies in the flow of energy, 
a warrior chooses to believe by predilection for the excitement of the adventure. And in this way, he learns to focus on the world from another point of view, the focus of an internal mental silence. It is only then that the immense treasure of the teachings is revealed.